call the building committee to order. First item, approval of our October 5th committee minutes. So moved. Second. Any discussion? No? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Item two, facilities update. Mr. Toddy. Hello, good evening. How are you tonight? Excellent. Excellent. So I will start facilities update not where I ordinarily start with custodial, but I'll start with um, a goodbye to an old friend. Um, effective October 19th, control of the Nancy Loud facilities was returned to the city of Rochester. In the attic of that building, we recently uncovered this little gem. And I'll let you kind of pass it on. Please be very, very careful with it. This is a cough drop box. And when you do a little bit of research on the box itself, it was probably there from the day that school was built. That has been in the attic since 1880. So 1880, Rutherford B. Hayes was president. Later that year, he was unseated by James Garfield. Uh, two notable schools opened in the United States that year. University of Southern California opened with a total enrollment of 53 students. And Nancy Loud Elementary School opened with probably about the same enrollment. <clears throat> Uh, W.C. Fields and Douglas MacArthur were born. The first electric streetlight was installed in the United States. And in Menlo Park, Tom Edison was testing the very first electric train, which I'm sure he totally invented by himself without any help from anybody else. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the future of the school is kind of up in the air right now. The city has uh, scheduled a listening session at the East Rochester Elementary School on November 13th from 6 to 8 p.m. So anyone from the community that wants to, you know, suggest what should happen with this building, the question is do we preserve it or, dest or, or destroy it? And uh, the city wants to have a listening session to hear what the community's thoughts are on that. So I just wanted to get that out there. And now I will move to where I ordin ordinarily start with the custodial update. We completed a uh, harassment training which had been scheduled with Primax. Um, and we scheduled our next custodial training, our carpet cleaning session, to be held soon. Last month, you heard me talk about uh, we were going to look into finding some reusable stuff for our high dusting equipment. And what we have is something I can't get out of the box. Hold on a second. Okay. There we go. I'll get it. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So, this is a duster. This is microfiber sleeve, and it can connect to a pole with a standard thread on it, so we can reach and do high dusting anywhere. And we had a very similar setup, but what we had was a paper sleeve that would go over, and the paper sleeve would have to get treated with chemicals. It would get used and thrown away. Now, one sleeve, a 10-pack of paper sleeves costs $8.92. This entire setup with the microfiber sleeve costs $12.36. When this gets dirty, we take the microfiber off, we throw it in the washing machine, and we get probably 1,000 uses out of it. So, great. Reduce, reuse, recycle. This was a, a, a great step forward. I'm pretty happy to be putting that out into all of our schools. Grounds. I think that picture speaks for itself. You know what the grounds people have been doing. All clean up. I, I was there when they were cleaning that, this up. They had that down to grass. Went by there today. It's covered in leaves again. So the, the best laid plans. Maintenance. You heard me talk a little bit a little while ago about air compressor. The air compressor on the left just came out of my shop across the hall. That was original to the construction of this building and. It was no longer able to be recertified due to age. The tanks get stressed by having pressure in and out of them. It stresses the steel, weakens the steel, and at some point you have to retire them. The picture in the middle is an air compressor that we took out of the Credo Technology Center during the renovation project. It sat in my shop until we were ready and able to do the swap out. And the salvage compressor from Credo is now in service right across the hall. Right next to it is a Bridgeport 5 access milling machine that is also was salvaged out of the Credo Center and is also now in service right across the hall. And right on the work table of that, you can see a spindle from one of our zero turn mowers that we were able to machine and repair and put back into service in house without having to send it out. Maintenance we are uh, 
at 50% staff, uh, soon to be 75%. And Spalding High School Band and Chorus, we had a second stakeholder meeting on October 13th involving teachers, administrators. We had some school board representation there. We're now in design development, hoping for design documents uh, in December to review one more time before going out to bid. Air quality improvement project, the controls project, just some little tweaks on the closeout. It's great to be able to watch how the controls deal with change of seasons to see how they're going to function. So we're just finishing that up. Rochester Middle School VAV project is just a little touch-up painting that needs to be done, and that will be 100%. Um, the Spalding High School uh, about uh, the Spalding High School ventilation project, not to be confused with the Spalding High School controls project. Um, these are some new radiant panels in the auditorium that will be in service soon. Um, and here's a great picture right here. On the left, you see there's three exhaust pipes and three air intake pipes. So the air for combustion now goes in through these white pipes, goes through three new boilers, and comes out the gray pipes. And these pipes essentially replace this entire structure. So there's some progress in, in, in design. We've got about a 40 tons of brick from the original design. It's been replaced with about 12 pounds of PVC, which will last longer and run more efficiently. <clears throat> Work orders completed for the period of October 1st through October 31st. We completed 108 work orders, which is down from 128 in the previous reporting period. Created 145 new work orders, down from 163. Gives us a closing ratio of 0 0.75 to 1. A little bit down from last month, it was 0 0.79 to 1. And we have now open 34 left from the October batch. Average days from assigned to complete is 6, which is down from 7.95 in the previous reporting period. And this is uh, just one of the many reports that our uh, computerized maintenance management system can generate very, very easily. And this is sorted all the work orders from October by type. When I look at this, I see 19% of our work orders fell under the title facilities, and 19% of them fell under the title others. Other. That tells me we probably need some more categories so people can kind of fine tune their, their submittals a little bit. But for a shop our size, there, there's, you know, there's four, well, we're fully staffed, there's only four people out there doing maintenance work orders, so we really don't need that granular level of control. It's when you have hundreds of people and you're sorting a lot more. But pretty cool report, and that is all I have for facilities update. Thank you, Dave. Anyone have questions? So we'll just real quick question. Item. Okay. I'm so sorry. That's all right. Just real quick question on the on the chart. Yes. What's the difference between others and other? So other is a category itself. Yep. And others would be things that didn't fall into any of those categories. <laughs> it makes perfect sense. It that doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. that no, I just it was a late it was a late. Yeah. So. Next item, paper towel bid. So we went out to bid for paper towels, and we'd asked for a lot of information. We had a bunch of respondents. The basic response was a per case price, which you can see here. And if I look at the per case price, the apparent low bidder is Prudential overall supply at $42 per case. But these kinds of things you really got to look into a little bit more. Um, among the other information I asked for is how wide is a roll, how long is a roll, how many rolls are in a case. When you take all those numbers into account, you can figure out the square foot per case. When I know the case price, I can figure out the cost per square foot. And when I do that, Prudential Supply is no longer the low bidder. HD Supply is at 0. Uh, or 0 0.012 cents per square, or dollars per square foot, as opposed to 0 0.014 from Prudential Supply. So I'd like to recommend that we proceed with the purchase of paper towels through HD Supply at $49.52 per case. And as part of this, they will come into the district and change all of the paper towel dispensers. Okay. We need a motion for it. Do you want to have a discussion? 
Uh, Mr. Toddy, sir, uh, if I could, sir, quality of the paper towels. We we got samples submitted on all of them, and uh, we we touched and felt they dried our hands with everything, and my hands were amply dry. Thank you, sir. Any other questions? Go ahead, Matt. Uh, the dispensers is it their cost putting it in? It is. Well, it's I mean, it's their cost, but now obviously it's built into the case price that we pay. And they're also giving us, I think we requested for 20 spares to sit on the shelf, so if something breaks, we have one to replace it. Anyone else? Go ahead. Dave, do we have any the automatic hand dryers or the, the air dryers? We don't have any of the air dryers, and it's, it's something I don't think I would want to deploy in the elementary schools. I don't think the paper is probably needed for a lot of other purposes, especially in elementary schools. I've often thought about doing it at the high school and middle school level, and uh, when we didn't really have the electrical in place to, to justify the cost, now that we've reduced the lighting demand in the building so so significantly over the years with the conversion to LED, there's probably electric available in the building. There's pretty significant wiring costs to bring wire to each one, but that's something that's never far out of my mind. You will one day hear me talking about putting in air hand dryers at the high school and middle school level. And, and again, I, and, you know, I, taking aside the vandalism part of it, but obviously the purchasing of paper paper products and then cleanup of paper products and, and the waste of paper products and things like that, somewhere along the line there's going to be a balance of, you know, <coughs> cost. Reduce, reuse, recycle. You're in the reduce category. Thank you. Anyone else? So we have a motion and a second to accept the bid from HD Supply. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Motion passes. Next item. Great Bay Partnership. So I'm going to let uh, Michelle Halligan Foley take this first slide and uh, tell us a little bit about what's going on here. All right, so good evening, everyone. Um, tonight, I wanted to share a possible uh, Great Bay partnership opportunity. Um, just want you to think about it tonight. I am on the Great Bay Advisory Board, so we meet a couple times a year, and um, it came known to me that um, Great Bay um, is leased across the street and their lease is ending and the um, owner has other ideas for that piece of property. And so when I heard that, my wheels started spinning and I took the opportunity to um, call a meeting with the chancellor of the community college system and the president of Great Bay to talk about a possible partnership that we could venture on. Uh, so we had a wonderful conversation and I shared some of my ideas. These ideas are really out of the box ideas. Um, but I wanted to share um, the passion that we have for Great Bay. And um, their data shows that a number of Spalding kids, we um, actually give them a lot of our students. Um, they go on to Great Bay after compared to the other school surrounding schools. And I wanted to keep a satellite uh, campus up in Rochester, and that would be for our Milton and our Wakefield, so uh, the farther north. And um, I shared some opportunities that we could possibly um, do right at the Credo Center. Uh, we talked about uh, having maybe some of their equipment come over to the Credo Center and we could do things like an early afternoon class or we could do an after school or an after dark class where the Great Bay instructors would come in and our students would have opportunities, more opportunities to be able to receive industry recognized credentials to receive certifications and college credit. Um, and it would be their instructors coming in. If you remember, currently we have the auto program, we have night class, 
uh, Great Bay there as well. And we've been doing it for years. It's a wonderful partnership. It, um, it works out really well. So their lease goes until the end of the school year. Uh, and then they're looking at possibly closing their doors. So that would be the 24-25 school year. And so one of the things that uh, Mr. Repusey, Mr. Toddy, and I looked at was the equipment and the cost of the equipment. So I'm going to have Mr. Toddy just, like, if you can just hit the equipment list. Then. I think, I'm not sure that's is that going to... Anyway, if he if you can't get that, we'll get you. Again, you just hit escape and then click on it when it's in the PowerPoint view section. Right here. Yeah. Well, he's trying to figure out the technology here. Um, the equipment that we're looking at came to um, seven hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars, two hundred and ninety and forty-eight cents. Um, this equipment um, includes uh, welding booths, includes some CNC machines, uh, things that we could use, um, and they have offered us to use them during the day with our students as well. And so we asked for uh, the, the number of equipment um, being new, used, moved. So the welding booths, for example, you see um, there are 14 um, for a total co uh, cost of 115000 um, And then I did ask for the electricity needs as well. So um, the equipment would be going into three areas right now. It would be going into the engineering lab where we could do um, some more certifications with the equipment. In the precision machining lab, and then we're thinking about a new welding lab. And I'm going to have Mr. Toddy talk about that in a little bit um, and where we're thinking of having it. Um, this is a, an exciting opportunity and something for you to think about because we do have to think about um, some renovations. Um, and I'm going to actually let Mr. Toddy go through Hi. that first and then we'll finish up. All right, so I'll start with just a couple of pictures of the equipment that we saw. This is, these are uh, some, uh, some mill machines that would probably go into engineering space. Um, and they're all on wheels. So if you go back, you can see uh, they are, you can easily move them around. They're all on wheels. Um, and this equipment is not old at all. So on each one of these machines, to the right, you'll see there's a, a computer or keyboard with a screen, and that's how you would program the machine. And there's two different kinds of languages that these will work. One's a FANUC machine, and I can't remember what the other one is, but the other piece of equipment they have is two different labs set up so that kids don't have to go to the machine. They can spend time just figuring out how to write programs and how to speak the language to talk to the machines. And there's one set up for FANUC, and there's one set up for the, for the other language. Sorry, I don't know the name. And this is the welding lab, and this is a really <laughs> kind of a neat. The big blue boxes are completely modular, and they're research devices with, with internal filters. So uh, I did some work in the welding lab at Manchester Community College, and it's a wind tunnel. They move millions of feet of air through there to get rid of all the fumes from welding. This is a completely different approach. It, it takes all the fumes from welding sends it through right in that blue box to a series of, of improving and improving filters and it returns the air to the room, which saves energy and heating and cooling costs. It's, it's much less fan work, it's much less installation costs. They're, they're pretty nifty little boxes. Um, so, if you will remember this CTE uh, construction project, we're looking now at the, the area, this is the back of the building, this is Small Wonders. This is what used to be the bridge. You used to be able to drive right through here. Now that back area is enclosed. And during the project, we thought that we would spend a little bit of extra money and enclose part of that open area 
This area became a CTE storage space. It was built with CTE dollars for the purpose of creating a CTE storage space. If we look inside that existing, oh, well, from the outside, the gray panel to the left is the enclosed CTE storage, and the right is the glass entrance into the building. If we look inside the storage space, it's what I would call a little bit underutilized right now. Um, there's some facility stuff in there, some, sh some chairs, and some sports storage. Um, we did just build a new sports storage facility so we could uh, easily accommodate that mm -hmm. on the other side of the campus. So we visited the site with uh, EEI Contracting and Banwell Architects and came up with a plan to take the existing storage space continue to extend that wall all the way across and that area would become a lab classroom and this would become the welding lab. The glass doors that exit out right here now are actually part of the fire capacity so we would have to create a second new egress. There is a storage room right here and there used to be a door right here on the old CTE center so we just would reinstate that door and go through that storage space and come outside. <coughs> we would lose a few square feet in graphic arts um, not much to speak of, and that's what it would look like kind of from the, from the front. Um, so, the project as described involves about 1,900 square feet, and we did have architects and we visited with contractors, so we're not just grasping at straws here. They're coming up about $317 a square foot, which is, which is pretty good. Our new construction project is coming in at about $515 a square foot, and if you look at commercial construction, you can find the average from two to four hundred so might be a pretty good average for, for, for this type of project. So we're three, we're right in the middle, so about 602,000. Uh, there's a breakdown there if you want to get into it, but there's, none of this has been bid out, and none of this is, is real yet. This is kind of the back of the napkin, 60,000 foot view, just to give you an idea of what costs might be. And I um, just wanted to throw this out there one way that we could maybe look to, to uh, deal with that cost was uh, through the New Hampshire statutes of 33-7, talks about lease agreements of equipment. And if you read through this, um, building or facility improvements, improvements related <coughs> to the installation, purpose, or operation of such equipment shall be deemed to constitute equipment. The cost of such improvements may be financed through lease agreements. So they call it a lease, it's really financing. Um, so we did some rough math, and if, so I, you saw the construction cost was 600000 I put 700000 in here, because we still need to get equipment from Great Bay here, get it installed. So, you know, working, painting with very broad strokes. If it were a $700,000 project at 15 years and 6% lease, it'd be about $70,800 a year uh, cost to lease it that might make it more palatable or easier to digest. The other option would be to, to bond the whole thing. And yeah, I think that was all I had on cost and I'll give it back to you. Michelle, do you want to... So um, this is just something to think about right now. Um, I am, I do have a meeting with the president tomorrow. She just wants to know, um, you know, how this is going and then we'll continue to update you um, and if you're interested in moving forward I would like to know sooner than later um, because they will start thinking about other opportunities. I think one thing to just share that we, we spoke with them about is their program over there was because they expanded their, their footprint and welding is one of the most in-demand jobs in the country um, it's unfortunate that their lease is going away, um, but we've talked initially about, yes, this could be a cost to the district, but maybe it's a cost share between the community college and the district, and so we've started that conversation with them as well, so that hopefully um, we continue to add programs or, or be able to give kids opportunities or, or even people in our community options of, you heard Michelle talk about after dark classes, like, I want to start a new career. I go there and I'm taking classes. Currently, they use our auto site right now, right? And we we allow them to do that through our, through our um, facilities agreement. So there are people in our community taking auto through the community college right now at our school. So 
maybe we could do that with them at Weldon as well. Um, and then the other um, programs that Michelle talked about would be, if we did enter into agreement at some point, those would be machines used right away with our students in current programs that we already have. Michelle, if I could ask you a question about the welding program, is that something that's currently in the Perkins rotation? Would we be able to qualify for Perkins under welding? Is there one currently in another school? So there's to the welding program. Yeah, there's one currently in Dover, and we would not impede on that at all. We would um, have classes that uh, for one. Uh, students who may not get into the Dover program, they have a waiting list every year, so we want to offer more opportunities. Um, and two, we talked to them about doing a third year. So Dover has welding year one and year two, and they would, Great Bay would offer a year three program for them with other IRCs and certifications. So um, it is, you know, a collaboration among all, but we would not be taking away from the Dover program. The only other question I had was specifically to Mr. Tommy. When you looked at the list, there seems to be an awful lot of draw on some of that hardware, specific to electrical current. Any concern from you infrastructurally on that? No, we have, we, we can support that electrically. That's one of the largest costs in, in the, the largest line item in the breakdown of construction cost is the electric service. We have capacity in the panel, and hopefully there'd be an opportunity to salvage some equipment out of the existing Great Bay space, those switch gear, and bring it here without having to bring it entirely new. Thanks, sir. Other questions? Go ahead, Matt. On the screen here, with the potential for at least at 15 years, and what have you, is this equipment going to last 15 years, or would we be um, potentially financing stuff that would be obsolete before we finish paying for it? I, I, the the welding <coughs> equipment will last 15 years for sure. I guess I don't have enough experience with some of the more the the software and that kind of stuff. If it is outdated, and you know, software seems to turn around pretty quickly. Um, I know FANUC has been around forever, and uh, it's widely used in industry, but I doubt it's going anywhere. And Thank I you. also think we just need to keep up with the regular maintenance. Mm -hmm. If we keep up with maintenance and, you know, keep on top of things, it will last. Thank you. So, Matt? Um, they currently have a lease agreement right now with their space, correct? So I know we talked about sharing the cost of equipment, but is there any conversation about them paying us a uh, lease? That, that's what I, we're, we're, we've entered like, into the conversation about cost sharing with this. Either a build out straight out, yeah. or the possibility of maybe they assume half of that yearly responsibility. So, so that way we that, can offset yeah. it. That would yeah. be yeah. kind of the lease agreement. Right. Yeah. 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 I just want to make sure. Thank you. Dave? Uh, he beat me to you it. You got it? So, yeah, thank Paul. you. Um, <laughs> I'm sure Mr. Dodd is one of the most thorough people on the planet. Any idea on this equipment that we have in SAD? Is there a way Great Bay can tell you the annual cost of maintenance? Because I'm assuming there's things like tips and fees and all that for the welding. Sure. sure. Welding is uh, is pretty consumable heavy, right? You've mm -hmm. got rods and tips and gas. Um, we could certainly approach Great Bay. Typically, those things don't fall through the facilities budget. That goes through uh, Ms. Halligan Foley budget and operating. Uh, Cost of the school. Yeah, the only reason I ask is I think if we're going to absorb something like this, it has to be incurred the cost. We have kind of a forecast of like, okay, if we take this on, the residuals are this. Because I, I couldn't agree even more if you tell it fully that if we're going to do it, do it right. Like, don't let this stuff age and die off. It doesn't make any sense. So being prepared for the annual consumption costs is, is important. Go ahead. Um, Michelle, you I was wondering about the lease agreement. If uh, we lease it and pay so much and then we decide to buy it, then we lose all this equipment. So the equipment of the, in the space would be donated by Great Bay. So there's no cost of the, what we're actually leasing is, so it's, it's a lease is a deceiving word, Dom. And those are, these are my first question too. When I, if I lease a car, at the end of the lease, I have to give the car back. And if in the middle of the lease I decide I don't want that car anymore, I'm able to give the car back and get out of the lease. We're leasing construction. 
we're leasing the build out of the space. Oh. And at, it's a lease to own, so at the end, so lease is, a, is like I said, when I, when I see, lease is, I think it's a little bit of a deceptive word, um, but that's the word that they use in, in the law, so that's the word I'll use. Okay. Yeah. So I'm assuming we're going to get more information, yeah, more detail. Really no action tonight. Right. It's, it's more like we want to share this possibility with you. We're going to gather more information. Like, yeah. for instance, if Ms. Halligan fully meets with the president and says, yeah, we want to do a 50-50 cost share, just making it up, she would come back and share that with you yeah. all, and then you would have to assess whether or not that's good enough and what you want to do. But, Go ahead, Dave. With that being said, the, the, there has to be sort of the, the drop-dead date of commitment because of if we're planning on 24 25 we have build-up time that has to happen and obviously that would have to go to bid and the actual construction would have to take place to actually have this in place for 24 25 school year i mean well but but i think what's so really, like you you potentially could store this material in the barn let's just make it up so we just, we decided in june we're going to do it they have to get all their stuff out by September, we store it, we go out to bid next year, it gets built over the course of next year, and it would really be for the following school year. All right, so, so we're going to so we're we're gonna lose yeah. a year, actually, or between transitional year, yeah. if you will. Okay. Yeah. All right. I, I, if I may, I think that Michelle asked us this to kind of give an indication. So if, I'm, I'm personally very interested in this idea. So yeah. if, if you're interested in the idea, we're not committing anything. Just raise your hand so Michelle has a, a kind of a visual consensus. So I think the board is interested in moving forward, but with, I'm not, we're not committing to anything. No, right. But it's it sounds like a very cool idea. I just want to make sure you had some kind of visual to no, work from. No, that's great. And I appreciate it. And again, you know, this is more opportunities for our students for many years to come. Um, and we have this opportunity now. So um, I'm very happy that you're considering it and I will get other information that you need um, to make a wise decision moving forward. Um, one question I have is, would there be a cost savings if we did schedule it for this summer since the band and chorus uh, project will be happening? There is, there's always a cost of mobilization to be considered. Um, it's a pretty tall order. If you gave me a PO today, Give me a check today and say get that done this summer. Where I would be hard put to do it. I'm not saying it's impossible, but it that is a tall order. Okay. Anyone else have any questions? Thank you very much for bringing that to us. It was, Thank you. It's exciting. Uh, next item: five-year plan, which I don't think we have anything. Right? We did it. Last one. It's still in the uh, research phase. We got pardon me? It's still in that research phase. No, right. Uh, public comment was read, the policy, and we have no public here. The colleagues aren't there. Pardon? pardon? We do, but I'm not planning to speak. Okay. <laughs> we do. You're public, but not speaking public. Yes. Not okay. Public. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. She's behind your line of sight. Oh, I did. Sorry. sorry. Uh, anything under other? Go ahead. I do have a, um, a question that has come up um, regarding the Colson field and the softball field. The sign is still in the grass. I don't know if we could get an update in a future meeting on, or if there's any answers on where that is going. <coughs> Mr. Toddy, would you like to share tonight? Uh, sure. Um, so I disagree with the characterization of the signs in the grass, signs on the fence. Um, <laughs> Fair. <laughs> the, uh, so this board accept, accepted the naming of the field with the caveat that the people that were bringing that to you would raise funds for the sign and the installation of the sign. They got the sign made and they wanted to put it up on the scoreboard and I had some pretty serious concerns about wind load. A sign is a sale basically. And we don't know how much concrete is under the steel for the softball scoreboard. We recently had a football scoreboard that almost fell down when it had rotted out over the years. Unfortunately, we caught that early and got it repaired. 
So when we brought engineers or sign companies in to look at it, they said, yeah, we, don't, we can't guarantee that if you put that up, this will be safe. So I said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to have to retool the whole thing. And those prices came in, I guess, I don't have it in front of me, going from memory. I, I, I think we were in the 15000 15, 18000 dollar price range. And the people that were raising the money for the sign didn't have that money raised to support the new structure for the sign. So we came up with this as something that we could do that would at least get it presented for the dedication ceremony. Um, so I, I haven't been authorized to spend tax dollars on a, a frame for that sign. And I, I have no intention of doing that until I'm authorized to do that. Thank you. Just to follow up with that, uh, are they continuing to fundraise to get that remediated? I, 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 or are we in a stall? We're in a stall because, I mean, if you're waiting for guidance, I mean, I guess we're, I was unaware that you're waiting for guidance as far as dir our direction to spend money or, I mean, if that group is still fundraising, are we at a stall, I guess? I think question. we're probably at a stall. Well, I think right. that's probably an accurate word, but I can't speak for that group. Right. I don't know what their efforts are or what their plans are. Okay. All I know is I haven't heard anything. All right. Anyone else? Anything it's just else to follow up, there? like maybe going back to that group and seeing if they have an alternative idea. Uh, I think investing $20,000 to hang a sign is a little bit much. So. Yeah. Would they be okay with being on a dugout or on I'm the not <coughs> so would they be okay with them hanging the sign on the scores booth or the dugout or something that, something other than so we had talked booth. about some, some alternatives to the dugout and they didn't like that because it doesn't it faces outside of you don't see it when you're in the field yeah um, and the the scoreboard the score booth I don't think is wide enough to accommodate the sign oh, okay. I, I'd have to confirm that but yeah so. Do we need any action or they'll no, just reach no. out? Come down. Yeah. Anybody else have something under other? No, I don't. I really? Yeah. Cool. Sorry. Motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you.